Welcome to another video from the Micro Rooster. Today's topic is the transaction services. Um, we are going to be using a few examples to submit inputs and connect to data and adjust data from our database. You need the right privileges to be able to uh, use this transaction services. We'll start the demo by looking at an example from the tutorial, which is available for all of you. If you have the tutorial called Opportunity Management, it has a few boxes, text boxes, ability to open opportunities, edit opportunities. These are text areas and selections that you can make, uh, uh, that you can enter new data or make selections and submit the information to be recorded. This is a very uh, useful operational uh, mechanism available in MicroStrategy that allows the user to write back the data. Usually it's by reading some information, editing the information is where it's useful. Uh, it can be used in the web or the mobile. We're going to cover the web version today. So once we, once you get your hands on the tutorial and go and look at the operation manual report, that's the one we're going to be trying to mimic or use some of the information. Usually all the database, uh, the database that you need to use, you have to have right access to. In the tutorial, we have the operation, operational metadata that we're using, or the database. And you can look for it in your database, in your uh, computer, just by searching Operation Data Mart. You will find it in the MicroStrategy folder. I'm accessing it right now, and I'm looking at one table. We're looking at the Sales Opportunity Fact Table. And we're going to use that as our uh, table to edit and modify and enter information. We're going to look at the data sets for the transactional services uh, that were used. There was uh, multiple of these, but all of them are using some sort of a, a transaction service report, which is basically a free form SQL report. So if you go in, you will find a lot of these examples with begin and end transactions and a bunch of inputs and outputs associated with each transaction uh, report. Remember, transaction report will allow you to specify what inputs are used and what outputs are used. Usually the inputs are defined in a free form, uh, but you can use existing attributes and write if you have the right access to the uh, source of these attributes. If you don't, it's better to go ahead and just create your own new um, transaction uh, service and create a free form SQL to create your attributes and metrics first. So in this case, we have we got to map them correctly. We got to choose which uh, fact or facts we're choosing our information from. Um, and after we make that selection, we need to specify what we're selecting. So we have the two columns that we're selecting them. We're just going to do opportunity ID and opportunity name. A simple test. I'm not doing the whole thing. Maybe we can add uh, the date just to give it more. Uh, flavor. So remember Freeform SQL, if you're creating it, you have to insert each name of the objects that you're creating. So once you, and the order is very important, so the first one goes to the ID, the second one will go to the name, and the third one to date. Um, you can easily make these kind of errors when you're typing them in. I'm just going to give them some unique names so we can distinguish them from everything else. You could reuse existing items or you could point them to items already in your schema. But for simplicity with transactions, you might want to keep them separate just because you might want to you might want to keep the separation between the two types of information or schema. And remember that type of the data is important as well. We're going to save this transaction report. I'm just going to call it Rooster Transaction. Once I'm done with my identifying my freeform SQL, if I want to test it for validity, I can do that as well. There was an error. So what was the error? Let's go and fix it. I think I have mistyped opportunity with one P. So this is the part where freeform SQL is a little tricky. Uh, freeform SQL does not debug the code for you. So in that case, I had the column name incorrectly spelled. And it gave me an error, so I had to redo this. I removed it and I added it again as a 
date ID. Let's test it one more time. So that's why it's important to test your freeform SQL. It's easy to glance over one typo and move on. There we go. Now that we have a success, we can go to the next part, which is actually creating the transaction itself. So the transaction itself will reuse the SQL freeform that we created, the same objects. Remember to choose the right database instance. You can choose it before or after you open the editor. And we're going to start with inserting a transaction. And in between these two, we're going to enter them for the distinct values. We're going to set values because what we want to do is we want to have the users update their a few columns. So let's choose the columns that we want the users to update. We want them to update the opportunity ID. I'm going to keep them empty for now and put commas and I'll show you why. In a second, I just want to get the names of the columns down. These names of the columns are matching the names of the columns from the fact table. Actually, I'm going to move the ID into the WHERE clause because I want to make sure that I am joining or I am correctly entering names and dates for specific IDs. So I want to make that kind of unique entry. So now I'm going to start inserting and defining new inputs. I'm going to define attributes. You could define a metric as well. Same thing. Now I'm going to reuse from my free form. I'm going to replace these with the three elements that I chose that created in my free form SQL that were pointing to the fact table. So now I'm saying, okay, where am I going to read this information from when, when I display it? Well, here we go. We're going to get it from my date, my opportunity. Drag the attribute form desired or select it and click OK. I guess selecting an OK is the right way to do it. And I'm going to make sure that the order of my selections matches my freeform SQL editor. Little tiny mistake here or there, you can get the things everything wrong. So, but don't get frustrated if you don't get it right from the first time. Also, uh, you have the option to make these required or not required. You also have the option to remove a whole line if something is optional. So if you want to the reason this is tricky because you want to tell the editor what to remove if something is optional. So that's why I highlighted the whole sentence and before I created the optional. Also want to give it an output. The output is, think about it as a dummy output. This is just saying for every input there's an output. There's a feedback loop. We don't necessarily need to use it, but there it is. You have to enter it. It's associated with your transaction. Okay, if we're ready, we already set our transaction, and now we can save it. It's going to look just like the freeform uh, windows or the window that you saw with the freeform editor. I'm going to go to my rooster transaction. I want to make sure I do not have it cached. This is critical. If you're updating and you want the new information to be reflected immediately, you want to disable the cache in your uh, report, not the transaction, the report itself, the free form report. If you're using a regular report, you want to do the same thing. Go ahead and create a simple dashboard using the report I created, the free form report. Remember, I'm still using the report because I want to add the columns, etc. I'm going to just first use the whole report. Let me adjust it, add it. Add another panel, and this time I'm just going to do text fields. Just to show you that both of them work in the same way. A little slightly when you customize them or when you create the transaction link, but they do serve the same purpose. And you can display this in any form you want. I'm just going to use something simple just for displaying the functionality. 
All right, once we get the items ready, we can start linking the transaction. So I'm going to right click on these grids and configure the transactions that we have. Selecting our transaction from the uh, transaction folder that we saved it, where it's going to display our transaction inputs and the objects associated with them in the dashboard. We're going to tell it which ones to enable or disable. If you don't want one to be editable, that's OK. You can disable it. There's a selector styles. So for date, usually you want to use a calendar. There's a bunch of other formats that you can use. There's also some control properties. You can limit the input, how many you know, uh, letters or characters you want this field to be, etc. So you can you have some extra controls here that you can add to each and every uh, field. Even though it's a graph, uh, it's a grid, you can still control uh, the each column one at a time. All right, so let's go to the, if you click on any of these, it'll allow you to control all of them. And there's a catch here. You really need all of them. Okay, so whatever you have, you want to include them. Otherwise, it won't be recognized in the input properties and it'll cause a problem for you. So even if you don't want to edit it, the fact that it's part of your transaction, it's MicroStrategy is going to want to know what you're going to do with it. So make sure you always add them in the panel and always use a panel stack to add all your components. Each panel stack will be a group. Think about it as a group for all your transaction elements. So if you want to create multiple transactions, use multiple panel stacks. Don't bundle them up in one panel stack and wonder what's going on. It might get a little confusing for you. It's easier to use a panel stack per transaction. Same thing here, just similar, but the field names are not going to be column names. They're going to be the actual script in the, uh, in the text boxes that you created. And here we're just going to disable one of them. We don't want it to be editable. We want the rest to be editable. And there we go. The last thing we want to do is we're going to add a submit button. So we're going to add an action button and we're going to let it target our, let me give it some color. And then we're going to say, okay, what is it going to do? And is it going to refresh? Yes, it's a good choice. And what is it going to tell the user if it's successful? I'm just going to type a, a few words here so that if I see them, I know I'm successful. You can automatically let the targets be chosen or do them manually. I prefer manually, but it's up to you. All right. So I think I have all my pieces here. Let's go test it. And there we go. Now, when I run this, I can see. See, I can see that I can modify the dates or select different dates and I have an error. I intentionally left this error because I want to show you how I debug them. It is very easy to create these types of errors when using this uh, strategy. So we need to go and figure out what went wrong. So I'm going to go to my transaction and see what did I do wrong here and fix it. I'm going to open the transaction. OK, I'm missing an update statement. It doesn't know which table to update the information that I created for the transaction. Simple, I added it. Now I'm going to go back and make my modification and test it again. So you saw how it's so easy to just forget one line. And there's no debugger, so you won't know until you're done. Uh, and you're at the testing phase. So hopefully you won't make too many mistakes. And if you notice, we submitted a successful and we got the message and it's reflected in our database. And the same thing, if I go to my next panel, I have the same capability, similar thing. I can take, type in whatever I want. In the 
two fields that were editable because I only limited it to two fields. Choose the dates. I don't have control over what's not editable and I can submit. And that shows success. So there we go. Now we can go back to the database, refresh it if needed. It'll show you the new uh, input or the updated input for the first item. Let me go back to the tutorial itself and show you the MicroStrategy demo, transaction demo. And since it's linked to the same database, it was using actually our results. Notice here they have uh, they have multiple panel stacks, multiple transactions, and some of them are um, in empty and some of them are for open opportunities so there's an update and there's a uh, insert statement that they were using in their freeform sequels but at any rate uh, each panel stack is connected to one transaction that way it can group all the elements and all the elements have to be available from that transaction stack there they make sure to do that so that they do not have conflict of elements or inputs and transactions within a panel stack so it's easier to control your layout when you create one panel stack per transaction service you can have selectors etc controlling the information as well thank you very much for watching this video and see you again thank you